everyone, welcome to another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. Today, I'm talking to Mr. Benjamin Moore, a board member of the Ministry of Elijah, and he's gonna share some information with us about the building that we're in and about the ministry. So it's so nice to talk with you today, Mr. Benjamin. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. It's my pleasure to, uh, to meet you today. Thank you, thank you. So we are here at the Ministry of Elijah. That's right. And this is one of the... Seven churches that's yes. still in Addison, correct? Yes, and it's one of the oldest churches in the village. All right, and you are born and raised in Addison, Ohio, is that correct? More or less. I, yes, I came here when I was two years old, so yes. All right. That's all I remember, mostly is Addison, yes. All right, well, tell us a little bit about where we are today. I know that this building used to be a barn, and it was transformed into a church, so what information can you give to us about that? Well... First of all, I can really just say that the Ministry of Elijah mm -hmm. is the former First Baptist Church of Addison, mm -hmm. which was uh, uh, started um, April, uh, August the 9th, mm -hmm. 1889. Wow. And um, uh, it's one of the oldest churches in the village, really. Mm -hmm. And um, the original members, they met in an area called the Bottoms, mm -hmm. which is no longer here now. Mm -hmm. And... Um, they would meet in homes, and uh, there was a big oak tree in that area, mm -hmm. and when the weather was good, mm -hmm. uh, they met under, the, uh, under that tree in the shade. Mm -hmm. And um, they moved to this location, 275 Main Street, sometime in the 1930s. Okay. This was like a barn, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. um, and it was pretty well open, mm -hmm. and uh, that's, uh, that's where they started. Okay. Then there was a major uh, building project in 1954. Mm -hmm. This is what this is where the big change occurred. Okay. Um, the entrance mm -hmm. was removed, mm -hmm. and a larger entrance was installed. Now, was that because all the people were coming here? <laughs> Probably. Yes. <laughs> that, that, this was this was uh, the the largest church. Wow. And um, we um, had um, a pastor study mm -hmm. added on. A uh, choir room added on, mm -hmm. uh, downstairs, uh, the kitchen, mm -hmm. men and women's um, uh, restrooms were installed. Mm -hmm. um, and so, in, in the sanctuary, mm -hmm. the ceiling was lowered. Mm -hmm. New windows were installed. Okay. Acoustic tile was put on the, on the sides, and, and, and uh, we have um, tiling in the, in the ceiling also. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then on the outside, mm -hmm. The permastone was put on the side, mm -hmm. uh, in the front, and on the chimney. And um, the um, building was raised three feet, so you, you had to come up, step up to come into the church. Mm -hmm. Given that the church, the appearance, much as, as it is today. Mm. Yeah, that was the uh, first major construction of, of this uh, church mm -hmm. in the... In the uh, 1960s, mm -hmm. uh, another building project was uh, undertaken. Mm -hmm. And here it was done to uh, enhance the basement mm -hmm. and, in, and improve the appearance of the sanctuary. Okay. Now, in this particular project, mm -hmm. a large I beam spanning the entire length of the church wow. was installed. Mm -hmm. um, the um, new ceiling tile in the basement now. Uh, and lighting was installed, and um, wood paneling was put along the walls, and tile was laid on the floor in the basement, mm -hmm. and also uh, in the sanctuary. Okay. But in 1979, this was, was a, one of the significant happenings. Mm -hmm. The members of First Baptist Church mm -hmm. changed its name mm -hmm. to the Bible Class Church. And then later to the ministry of Elijah, mm -hmm. a non-denominational church, mm -hmm. as it stands today mm -hmm. in, in uh, 2014. So, do you remember during that time why the name change? Was it just a change in thought, or did they start to see that more people would come if they changed the name, or what was behind that? Oh, this was in to in totally led by the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so... 
back when people were coming, what are some of your fondest memories about this building that we're in now? Were there revivals on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights? Do you remember, you know, hand clapping, foot stomping, good music? What do you remember? Well, I remember all of that. Okay. I remember, I remember when we would have, uh, uh, where you, there'd be no space left in the church. Yeah. So I, I remember a lot of things mm -hmm. as, uh, as, as uh, time goes on, you see. So, but yes, there was, there was uh, many times when there was um, revivals and different meetings. And, mm -hmm. uh, this has always been, though, seemed like a focal point mm -hmm. in the village. Okay. Mm -hmm. it took to my child. So a lot of prayer meetings, a lot of people in the village getting baptized here, a lot of people blessing babies and Sunday school and vacation Bible school, I would imagine. Is that correct? Well, we had, we had all that goes along with, with the churches of that time that, that was going on, of mm -hmm. course. Um, we didn't have too much vacation Bible school, though. We, <laughs> we had, we had uh, uh, a lot of um, educational things in this, mm -hmm. in the, uh, involving the church, mm -hmm. and we would um, have activities and techniques and things of this nature, mm -hmm. um, outdoor things given by the sponsor by the church at that time. Mm -hmm. But uh, y'all yeah, have a lot of fond memories growing up mm -hmm. in the village. Mm -hmm. So, thinking about what were some of the most powerful things that the church did to have an impact on the community, be it a Thanksgiving dinner or passing out Christmas gifts to people in the village, what's something that, that really stands out in your mind on how the church had a huge impact in the community? How the church had a huge impact during my childhood. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I can't say that I was all that noticeable, um, mm -hmm. it turns out, as my childhood. Mm -hmm. um, the municipal building used to be right across the street, mm -hmm. and the building that you would probably see across the street. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where the people were voting. Mm -hmm. this, would, this would be a congregational location mm -hmm. during every election. That was one of the, one of the things I remember. Wow, yeah. okay. Yeah. And I have to ask you this, going from, since you are an African American, and watching how African Americans could not vote back in the 30s and in the 40s, what was the spirit like in this building when that change happened back in the 60s when African Americans were given the right to cast their vote and, and have their voice be heard? I think it was like all over the nation. Yeah. A time of rejoicing. Mm -hmm. saying, why did it take so long? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, but uh, but that it wasn't all solved just in the '60s. In fact, it's not really solved completely today. Right, right. So, with the people that go here now, are a lot of them longtime, lifetime members? Were they here back in the '40s and '50s, '60s and '70s as well as yourself? Well, I'll tell you what, um, uh, we have a saying here mm -hmm. that um, all that comes here is who the Lord sends. Absolutely. And so um, sometimes it's full capacity, mm -hmm. sometimes it's only half full. Mm -hmm. uh, whoever the Lord sends, that's who he sends. Absolutely. Yes. So you mentioned to us some information about the bottoms. What do you remember about the bottoms? Because I know that you said it's no longer there. It's kind of covered through by the highway now. So tell us a little bit about the bottoms and what that was and what, what that was like. Well, it was um, a group of, um, in fact, it was um, almost all, as you said, Afro-Americans. Well, that was quite a, quite a uh, uh, group there. Mm -hmm. um, all the homes were occupied by Afro-Americans. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember walking mm -hmm. down, because you could walk down one way and come back up, uh, up mm -hmm. and you could be back on Main Street. Mm -hmm. And if, during my childhood, mm -hmm. the street out here we call Main Street, mm -hmm. that was the highway. Wow, okay. See, uh -huh. that was the highway. That was US 50. Okay. And so uh, you could, you could uh, walk mm -hmm. and visit. Mm -hmm. And just come do a loop and come on right on back mm -hmm. and visit everybody and because everybody knew everybody see mm -hmm. and we kind of miss that mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. and that's kind of what we've heard we've heard that 
instead of there being a lot of homeowners, there are now renters, and so people are kind of in and out of the community. But one of the things that I thought was really interesting when we were talking to a few other members at, at other churches around the city is that people who've been here all their lives shared with us that there was some, some separation between African Americans and Caucasians. However, when someone passed away, it was as if though the community all came together to support whose ever family that was or because everyone knew each other, they would all be there to support each other. Is that what you remember or do you remember That's, something I, I, different? I basically remember that when, when somebody died. Mm -hmm. yes, everybody came together. Okay. But there was a, there was a divide mm -hmm. otherwise. Really? That's true. Interesting. Yes. And because you grew up here, what can you tell us about how the schools were here when you were younger? The schoolhouse when you were younger. Do you remember a lot about that? The Addison Elementary School? Mm -hmm. I, I, um, I, I enjoyed it very much. Really? Um, I didn't really think that an interview would take us in this direction. <laughs> uh, talking about you know, mm -hmm. interrelationships and things of this nature. Mm -hmm. uh, I do remember that uh, where we all went to school together, mm -hmm. uh, blacks and white, mm -hmm. um, there was a separate PTA. There was mm -hmm. a colored auxiliary. Mm -hmm. that, um, so there was, some, there was a separation still. Mm -hmm. uh, even in the uh, earlier part, even, even with the high school. Mm -hmm. In the graduation, they all kids all went to school together. Mm -hmm. But it seems like um, when they would graduate, there would be um, assignments of seating mm -hmm. where there would be a color section. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that stopped uh, mm -hmm. in uh, 1953. Wow! Yeah. Wow! And it's amazing that you sing. You know, you're so present there in that time. You still remember all of that. Yes, I remember that because it stopped the year that I graduated. <laughs> <laughs> so the year that you graduated, yeah. you made history yourself then yeah. with that graduating class. That's yes. really cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, is there anything else that you'd like to share with us about the congregation that's here? Or um, I guess one of the things that I'd like to know now is Addison has changed so much over the years. So what's something that, that maybe used to happen that you enjoy seeing come back, be it the, the neighbors actually knowing each other or everyone actually coming out to support the different churches that are in the neighborhood? What's something that you remember that's not the same today that you would like to see come back in Addison? Well, I would, I would like to see what come back is when people know each other. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. when people know each other, they help each other more. Absolutely. We do things together. Mm -hmm. You know, there's more cohesion that way. Mm -hmm. So I would like to see that. Because mm -hmm. um, when I come down, I don't hardly know anybody now. See, yeah. because there was not, there wasn't very much housing. Mm -hmm. So many people had to move out mm -hmm. when we graduated from high school and went mm -hmm. on with our lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how does the ministry of Elijah still have an impact in the city of Addison now? I think you have to ask people that one. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, we we um, have open doors, yeah. Um, and so um, we we um, are open to anyone. Like I said, mm -hmm. whoever comes to that door, we know that the Lord has given us spirit to come. Absolutely. And that's that's what we that's what we say, and that's what we believe. Absolutely. Well, Mr. Moore, it has been awesome being able to sit here and talk with you today. Thank you so much for talking with us about the history of Addison and the ministry of Elijah and, and how you remember things being in Addison. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you very much. It's been, it's been my pleasure also. Thank you. I hope you have a wonderful day. All right. Thanks. Okay. Thanks for watching another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. I'm Danielle, and today we had the opportunity to talk with Mr. Benjamin Moore, a lifelong member of the Ministry of Elijah right here in Addison, Ohio. I hope you decide to tune in again. Remember to travel slowly and to stop often. Thanks for watching.